Hello guys, Turbocharged51 over here! I hope you're having a splendid day wherever you are in the world. And guys, it is time for the second last round of Season 1 here at Sao Paulo for the Brazilian Grand Prix. And I know I probably pronounced Sao Paulo incorrectly, but it's fine. Quick look at the performance chart as we head into the second last Grand Prix. Mercedes and Ferrari at the top plateauing away with Red Bull cons consistently upgrading to get near to them. Red Bull are very, very close indeed. They are within the shot of beating Ferrari and Mercedes at this stage in the Grand Prix. Then we've got Renault at, in their own league in fourth position and then Hearts, Force India, myself and Toro Rosso and McLaren are neck and neck, even Sauber actually are neck and neck for the rest of the field and then Williams bringing up the rear but also Williams are not too far behind so uh, there's still a few, few interesting things to come. Let's head into qualifying for the Brazilian Grand Prix guys like I told you guys the previous episode Brazil and Abu Dhabi don't like me, but I like them, so hopefully I can convince them to have me, let me have a good Grand Prix. Let's go. Welcome to qualifying here in Interlagos as the cars are readying up for what's likely to be a very important session. And I'm here, of course, with Anthony Davidson on what has turned out to be a very pleasant day indeed. No weather to interfere, no problems on the track, so absolutely no room for error. That's right Crofty, it's looking good out there at the moment. Each team will have their own game plan for this session and of course once the cars leave the garage they'll be under Parc Fermé conditions so any last minute adjustments need to be done right here and now. Beyond that it's all up to the driver. Who can keep their tyres in the right temperature? Who can hit their apexes? No race fuel on board these days of course. These are the fastest cars we've had in a long long time and it's right here in qualifying where they're at their absolute peak. Let's get started. So we're here in the pit box ready for the Brazilian Grand Prix qualifying. I hope you guys are excited because I am. Guys, as you see, Sao Paulo has a quite low to medium downforce setup. I tried four or five wings. Um, the front end, it, it bits quite good, but the rear end was just too twitchy. And if you go four or six wings, the car just has no straight line speed. So I had to go back down to three front wings and six on the rear. Um, I got better lap times out of the car with that. But uh, safety, uh, tuning aside, <laughs> let's head on to our first lap here at Sao Paulo. And as you guys see, the center, the glorious center is here, the first triple chicane here as we start our lap one of the one of my favorite corners in f1 but also one of the hardest corners in f1 we complete our first lap and it's a one minute 8.5 not a very good lap time if you go to quality trim that's quite a, 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 a that's a very quick race time so uh, as you guys could see with my car not being upgraded due to the regulation change we are quite down on pace and I have to be honest guys I didn't feel confident this weekend not because I'm not good on the track just because I don't know, it's just, I, I didn't have any confidence in the car because that I saw the performance shot and that we were so far down. But in any case, we finished our second lap with a 1 minute 8.294. Still not very fast, and as you guys, you guys will see, by the end of the session when we want to go out again, we are dead last. And, I w <laughs> like I said, I just had no confidence. And I knew that I wanted, if I wanted to defend my position, position from Perez, we were fighting for best of the rest, P7. I was going to have to pull something out of the bag but as you guys see here we go here on to the very final lap here at Sayapola and let's get run through this lap as, uh, lay, as hard as you can and as late as you can onto the brakes for the center is second gear to get the continue third gear then fourth gear to kill the oversteer go through this fast you can I didn't get a very good exit on this, in the middle part of the corner as you guys see we're down on time open the DRS overtake mode on the ERS going down here over 330 kph down to fourth gear get the car to turn in the, um, bump the car down to high for the ERS but if you don't need to use up all your ERS by the end of the lap 8 gear as you head up this little back back straight here down into well not the back straight this little uphill section 6th gear flat out to that corner down to 2nd gear to get the car to turn in for this very tight right hand corner then back down to 2nd gear for this left hand twist then go up there try to kill the oversteer which I do not do down to 2nd gear down, go through here don't get the car to oversteer which I do again and um, like I said guys you guys can see the rear of, of the car is so loose I didn't have any confidence into the final corner before we head onto the constant curving back straight 
5th gear, 6th gear, 7th gear, as soon as you get hit 8th gear, go up into overtake mode on the ERS now, and then you open the DRS just here as you go over the pit, the, uh, the pit line, and we cross the line, and it's only a 2 and a, and a half tenth better on our lap, and unfortunately guys, we are down in P18, we could only beat the Williams cars, that is not good at all, but you don't get points for qualifying, so let he let's head to the Brazilian Grand Prix. As surely as the sun rises in the morning, the Brazilian Grand Prix packs out the grandstands and creates incredible drama. Title deciders, heartbreak, triumph and home glory. All these and more can be found in abundance here at the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache. We're racing today then at Interlagos, a historic 2.7 mile circuit and one of the few anti-clockwise tracks on the calendar. 15 corners in total, 9 to the left and 6 to the right, with a technical middle section opening up to a flat out sector 3. And that gives us our best passing opportunity down into turn 1. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid we have... Vettel, Raikkonen, Max Verstappen and Ricardo, Sainz, Perez, Hülkenberg and Pierre Gasly, Ocon, Grosjean, Stoffel van Dorn and Magnussen, O'Connor, Leclerc, Lance Stroll and Sergei Sorokin. Alonso. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Marcus Ericsson rounds off the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Keep your eyes open on the run to turn one and keep it clean. We want to come out in one piece. Good luck. So guys, ready for the Brazilian Grand Prix, just quick on the strategy guys, with my car being loose on the rear guys, I couldn't tune it anymore due to park firm rules, I was going for an aggressive two stop, super softs to softs to back onto super softs to see if I can get pull anything out of the bag, so, hope you guys are excited for the second last round of the championship, so let's head to the Brazilian Grand Prix, jam with me! We are on the grid for the Brazilian Grand Prix. We head to five red lights. Mercedes lock out the front row. Ferrari on the second row with Red Bull on the third row. It's a little nice 
Noah's off with the Formula 1 cars. And we are go, go, go into the first corner. The Senna SS, the two Ferraris and the two Red Bulls are side by side. Valtteri Bottas gets the jump on Lewis into the first corner. So Bottas is leading the way from Lewis. Then Kimi Raikkonen from Sebastian Vettel. Then Ricardo and Max Verstappen. But it's only the first few corners. There's still a lot to happen on this first lap. Lewis has a look on Valtteri but doesn't get the move to stick. The two Red Bulls and Ferraris are still side by side. Kimi and Vettel are fighting away. And now with Kimi being the, the, the I want to say the the rear end of the championship with a fight because Lewis and Sebastian are tied for the lead with Kimi being behind one point but one point is still one point even though it's like the width of a uh I don't know, a chest hair? <laughs> That's a very weird assumption to make. But still, Kimi and Vettel are still side by side. The two Red Bulls are, are getting all closer onto their gearboxes. You guys can't fight like this. If you want to beat these Mercedes today, you are going to have to work together. Come on, Seb, Seb just let Kimi go. Or Kimi, let Seb go. Whoever gets, gets the better drive, just let the other one go. And you guys need to try and slipstream each other to catch up to those two Mercedes cars. Kimi is on the outside as we end the first lap. Is Kimi going to go for a move? Kimi is around Vettel even before they head to the first corner. But Vettel pulls out again and Vettel is now on the outside. Come on guys, stop fighting. There we go, there we go. Kimi is up into P3, Vettel is now P4. Now you two need to go chasing after those two silver arrows. You can't, you guys can't do this. We go jump onto the POV of my start for this Grand Prix. You guys see I'm P15. I get a brilliant start off of, the, off of the line due to my very beautiful red wall super soft tires with all these guys at the back being on soft tires. Well, most of them. I have a good jump into the first corner and I'm under pressure from Esteban Ocon, my rival's teammate in this stage. Sergio Perez is a little bit further up the road, guys. I knew I needed to stay with Sergio this entire Grand Prix and at some stage overtake him. And if he finished in front of me, I needed to finish the position right behind him. Otherwise, I'm... I'm going into Abu Dhabi with a massive, massive disadvantage. But as you guys see, here we go into the very tight and twisty part of the track. This is the sector where the Red Bulls shine out quite vigorously. Oh, there's a move up the inside of my teammate Pierre Gasly. Pierre, don't keep me, don't keep me. There we go, there we go, there we go. I don't know, always when I repeat something, I do it in threes. I don't know why. And it's another move up the inside of Nico Hulkenberg into the second very tight right-hander. I am up into P9 right behind my rival, Sergio Perez. Come here, you you ugly little pink car. Guys, I'm sorry. I don't like the pink Force Indias. I, I <laughs> the Force India have always built good F1 cars, no doubt about it. But why, why they decided on pink, I know BWT, their main sponsor, his main color is pink. But still, it to, in my opinion, it does not look good at all. But we head on to the end of lap 3. And guys, I was under so much pressure from the Renault of Nico Algenberg that I couldn't focus on catching Sergio Perez. And at this stage, I was desperate i was honestly honestly desperate just to get away from this renault because i knew paris was pressuring the other renault of carlos Sainz, who was in the battle for best of the rest but he f fell away a few grand prix ago with him getting his bad and unlucky results as you guys see nico Hulkenberg makes a successful move up my inside but i am right behind him and i was not in any mood to let him pass i go for a major dive up the inside oh there's a little bit of contact uh sorry about that nico but uh my friend, even though I got a warning for that little bit of contact, I cannot afford to let Sergio Perez get away. And at this stage, the beginning of lap 5, he is pressuring Carlos Sainz because the front runners are running away with this at this stage. Carlos Sainz is on the outside as Sergio Perez makes a dive up the inside and Sergio Perez is up into uh, a position in front of the Renault. Ooh, but it's a chance for me to pass him. Let's go little Toro Rosso, come on up the inside. Give the little Reno a squeeze. Give the Reno a squeeze on the inside for this very tight right-hander, and I am up in front of the Reno of, Car of Carlos Sainz. Oh, Carlos Sainz, brilliant turbo. We head here on the beginning of lap six, and at some stage, the the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo passed the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel, and at this stage, this was the least that Vettel had. Well, the least that he could afford so he's trying to get back in front of the Red Bull and he does it successfully and now he needs to chase after his teammate Kimi Raikkonen but at the end of lap 7 the start of lap 8 Lewis Hamilton is pressuring his teammate Valtteri Bottas for the lead of this Grand Prix Kimi Raikkonen is chasing them down as quickly and as hard as he possibly can but there's only so much Kimi can do but the two Mercedes are side by side as they go through the center it is now Valtteri slots in behind his teammate Valtteri is going to have the DRS is he going for a move on the outside he is definitely but Lewis is defending quite quite vigorously up the inside. Lewis defends the position from Valtteri Bottas and the new Brazilian Grand Prix race leader is Lewis Hamilton. 
We head here on to lap 9, the end of lap 9 And as you guys see, Kimi has caught up to the rear of Valtteri Bottas And also, the clouds in the sky have caught up to the racetrack Because it is very overcast and it looks very dull at this stage I was quite communicative on the radio with my engineer asking him about the conditions But he said it was going to be a dry race, so I trusted him and Kimi goes up into second position past Valtteri Bottas and at this stage for Kimi it was what was the what's the word that Arab always uses um, it was damage damage limitation so and at the end of lap 10 Daniel Ricciardo is the first car out of the leading six cars to come into the pit lane he's going to strap on his second set of super soft tires let's go Daniel Daniel has exits out of the pit and on the very same lap I come in for my pit stop but as you guys know according to my strategy I am going from a set of super softs onto the yellow wall soft tires and at the later part at, at a latter part in the Grand Prix I am going to go onto the super softs to have a very aggressive final stint. We strap on those beautiful yellow wall tires and guys I just wanted to show this poor Carlos Sainz at some stage had contact with someone I it wasn't with me I didn't see who but because of the wing change he was very far down the grid for the rest of the race so he was no longer a part of this race in my opinion at the end of lap 11 the race leader Lewis Hamilton is coming into the pit lane as well as Kimi Raikkonen and I'm sure Kimi is going to hold up Lewis a little bit here yeah Lewis drops he gets held up by Kimi but Kimi comes into the pit lane straps on this beautiful set of red walled super soft tires but he gets held up by Max Verstappen Max why why oh my word the very end of the next lap Valtteri Bottas lap the end of lap 12 and Sebastian Vettel are coming in for their pit stops and at this stage Vettel was chasing Valtteri as hard as he possibly could to try and take this position position from Valtteri Valtteri gets held up a teeny teeny bit from Vettel but not the end of the world Vettel is just a smidge closer to Valtteri but like I said those Mercedes had immense space for the Ferraris to catch and they were going to have to work for it here's the my rivals push up on the very same lap lap 12 and guys, Sergio Perez was making it very hard to catch him. I was struggling all the way and I was quite getting a little bit irritated because of my car's no pace mode. I don't know what you call it, but he had no pace. But let's let's go to this battle in any case. The the Williams of launch of launch roll of Sergio Schrocken was just in my and Nico Hulkenberg's way. He was a car that hadn't pit yet and had not pitted yet. Come on words, work with me. He hadn't pitted yet and he was just one of the cars that was traffic but here you guys see Lewis Hamilton at this stage is leading the Grand Prix comfortably from his teammate Valtteri Bottas I don't know what happened to Kimi but Kimi was just nowhere I know somewhere Valtteri caught him and overtook him but Kimi is in third position with Sebastian Vettel his teammate right behind him and at this stage Vettel was looking like he had the better pace in the second stint Daniel Ricciardo is bringing up the, the, the end of the top five with my rival Sergio Perez in bloody sixth position Max Verstappen is in seventh position myself in eighth position I was two positions, positions behind Perez under pressure from Nico Hulkenberg in ninth position but I defend successfully at that very quick image and my teammate Pierre Gasly is bringing up the rear end of the top 10 with the other force India of Esteban Ocon just outside but later on Max Verstappen he had an engine problem which well not an engine problem some sort of problem that the team fixed that's why Perez was in front of him but he caught up back to Perez when his problem was resolved and as you guys are going to see here this was quite a very easy move on the outside he pulled a out of Sergio Perez's view and it's just uh, like uh, thank you Perez for my P6 back as we head here on to the end of lap 22 Lewis Hamilton is coming in for his second pit stop of this Grand Prix and Lewis is going to strap on a beautiful yellow walled set of soft tyres going to the end of this Grand Prix I know that Kimi also came into the pit at this stage with either Lewis, Let, Valtteri and Seb go they did not come into the pit at this stage and Kimi was going to strap on his set of soft tyres getting to the end of the Grand Prix also what I want to tell you guys this is Daniel Ricciardo pitting um, and before I tell you what I wanted to tell you guys look at this Daniel at some point had contact with someone, broke his front wing, and is now going to let Sergio Perez move up even more. I was so frustrated at this stage because everything was going Perez's way and nothing was going my way. I realized after I saw the guys that went onto medium tires that the one-stop strategy was the way to go. I took a gamble, I lost the gamble. But still, because my car was not as upgraded as their cars, because I focused on the regulation change, um, yeah, I was, I just, I couldn't keep up, even with soft tires against mediums. They just caught me, or I just managed the gap. I couldn't extend the gap. 
So after all the leaders went into the pit, you guys will see it's lap 25. I finally decided, okay, it's time. Let's go into the pits. But as you guys see, right behind me is Max Verstappen. Sergio Perez is ahead of me on his medium tyres, so he was definitely going to finish in front of me because this now is 30 seconds back. And I was already like, I think, 10, 8, 10, 15 seconds behind him. So that was wonderful. And now you guys see, I'm going to fall all the way to P14. Now, yes, I know you positive guys out there are going to say, but you're on the softest compound tyre, you can push now. I know that, but Perez is in 6th position. I am not even in the points at this stage, and yes, I did get a podium in the previous Grand Prix, but me and Perez are not separated by different worlds of amount of points. I had to get points, even if it was P10. I really wanted P7 to finish behind Perez, but did you guys, are you guys, do you guys think that ha that is going to happen? I don't know. I was going to have to push as hard as I could, guys. But um, like I said, my car didn't have any pace. My car felt a little bit like a boat at the rear end. I just didn't have any grip at all. And as you guys see, oh, Kimi Raikkonen locks up. And Kimi just gifted Sebastian P3. Also, maybe not a bad thing. Maybe Sebastian can mount a fight to the Mercedes. You never know. But Kimi with this problem, yeah, he was not going anywhere. P4 was the best for Kimi, and he needed to hope and pray that one of those two Red Bulls, or even the Force India of Ocon, or Perez does not catch him. But we head here on to the beginning of lap 28, and as you guys see, there's a train of five cars ahead of me battling away. My teammate is part of this. There's a McLaren within the mix. There's a Williams, there's a Sauber, and a Haas. So we were uh, five different teams battling away for one position. But most of these guys were most of these guys were on medium tires. I was the only car on super soft tires. So as you guys see, we head here. I go for a move on the inside of my teammate at the very tight right hander. We go here through this. Pierre, dude, I'm fighting for best of the rest. You know that. Why do you make contact with me? We cannot afford this. We are going to lose the contractors to Renault and Force India already. Let's at least get something good going for us. Oh, sorry guys, but that just made me so angry at that stage. You, we can't afford this. I'm already behind. I'm not even in the points at this stage. And now the Williams of uh, Lance Stroll is battling away with the horse of Kevin Magnussen and myself with my teammates as well. Look, we're going to go four cars into the first corner, three wide in the front. Lance Stroll cannot keep the two Toro Rosses behind him. And at this stage, I was just desperate, guys. But look at wonderful Pierre Gasly at this stage. He still pressurizes me and he is on my outside going to make a very clean move. I'm going to give him the move GG's for the move. But he is still keeping me behind him. And I need the points much more than he does. It is for the money for season 2 and it is just to get our car a bit to get ourselves a better car. But we head here on, f on to lap 30 and the, the salvo of Marcus Ericsson was just holding us both up. I had the DIS on Ericsson tried to go for a move up, my, up the inside of my team, but he completely shut the door in my face. So I was still behind Gasly, but at this very moment, I completely flipped. I was just like, Gasly, you can fly into oblivion. This is my position. Bugger off. As you guys see there, I did the same thing that I did with Hulkenberg earlier in the Grand Prix. I made a very aggressive move up the inside because my race at this stage, with all due respect, Pierre Gasly, was much more important than yours. We head here, and this is Stoffel Van Dorn in the McLaren in front of us. I caught him quite quickly. I think this is the end of lap 31, if I'm not mistaken. We go here onto the straight, and you guys see I'm quite far behind. <coughs> Gasly still pressuring me, the little irritating teammate. Oh, Stoffel goes a little bit wide, goes onto the grass, and he even lets Gasly pass. Stoffel, why? Why? Oh boy, I just can't win. I just it, not, nothing is going my way for this race. But in any case, guys, we jump onto the final lap. This is Lewis Hamilton coming through to take the win of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Well done, Lewis. He has got a cushion he heading into Abu Dhabi. His teammate, to make it harder for the Ferraris, comes through in second place. Valtteri Bottas finishes in second place. Well done, Valtteri. And the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel is going to come home in third. But Ferrari have got a mountain and a half to climb as we head into Abu Dhabi. But guys, we head on to my POV for the very final lap. Luckily, I could defend from Gasly. But as you guys see, I ended up finishing in P9. 
before we cross the line before I start crying into my pillow. Perez has re-overtaken us in this championship fight for the best of the rest. I have got, I think, of, uh, I don't know how many, uh, how much point deficit we'll see at the end of the Grand Prix. But Perez is going to take this and we've got a mountain and a half to climb just like Ferrari. Okay, we're all a bit gutted with that result, but let's work hard and we'll get it together for the next race. Brilliant stuff from Mercedes today. That's another historic win. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It's a good result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Moving on to the driver of the day then. Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? Oh, maybe Marcus Ericsson? Yes, yes, I think I'll commit to that one. Marcus Ericsson, fine job, very consistent. On to the constructors then. We saw a dip in form from the championship leaders today. Their lead has taken a significant blow. There'll be plenty more twists and turns to come. Great work out there today. How do you think it went? You were cutting your way through the field during the race. So talk us through what happened between you and your rival today. There was quite a lot of contact today, wasn't there? Say things between you and... What a disappointing Grand Prix from my point of view, guys. My car just had no pace. I even lose the rivalry against Gasly, but away from that, me and Perez are separated by two points, two measly points. So Abu Dhabi was going to be a fight and a half. And Lewis Hamilton is leading the championship with 10 points from Sebastian Vettel and 14 points from Kimi Raikkonen in third. This championship was going to blow up in Abu Dhabi. I know it. It is going to blow up. But uh, before we go there, let's quickly hear from Emma. That's very disappointing. I know you can do better than that. Take stock of what went wrong so you can get a better result next time. Yeah, 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 I know. I know. Sorry. Guys, hit the like for for me, for good luck heading into Abu Dhabi. Choose your winners. Is it going to be Lewis, Vettel or Raikkonen? But other than that, guys, hope you guys enjoy it. Leave a like, hit the subscribe. Don't forget to ding the bell and I'll see you all in Abu Dhabi. Cheers!